Uh, this session, we have uh, invite. Uh, we are gladly to invite the Kurcho, uh, who worked for uh, who worked as a code monkey and built search service in Amazon Jungle. Today, he is going to uh, bring us the uh, the stream bytes nightmare before Python two end of life. Let's give a big applause to welcome Kurcho. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kurt Zhou. Uh, this topic, as you can see, is uh, the stir. This is called stir, not string. The stir by its nightmare before Python 2 end of life. And briefly introduce myself. Uh, I always call myself a code monkey walking in the jungle. It's because, yeah, I definitely walk in a, a jungle name called Amazon, and it's uh, Amazon Japan. And here is my GitHub and uh, Stack Overflow account. So first of all, I want uh, to see uh, how many people have ever meet this problem before. Raise your hand. Right. That's definitely a thing. If you check the Google chat, you will see an interesting result. Uh, Unicode encoded error is more than recursion error. Means what? Means that like people who learn Python for algorithm is actually le probably less than people who meet this encode error. And that's basically the fact we know now. And today's outline would be, I will talk about objective and the background of this talk and some Python stream 101. And finally, it's the treatment of the problem. And before the talk starts, I want to say, uh, in this talk, I will mention tons of very confusing terms, so be careful. First the thing is called stir. And stir is, means str function in Python. And bytes means bytes function in Python. And text. Text means Unicode in Python 2 and the stir in Python 3. And the string. String means a general string, just means text or bytes. It can be just any type of things. But don't, don't worry about that. You don't need to really understand the difference now. You just need to know there is a difference between those terms. Let's talk about objective. I want to use this called dining curve effect curve to explain later you will see in this talk. So at the beginning, people learn Python, they feel very just, uh, oh, I want to learn Python, how do I know that? And later, they start to research how to, how to use the Python interpreter, how to run Python. And finally, they can run the print hello world, they feel very happy about that. And let's open, like, uh, this, is, this was me, actually, last year. I, wa I, wa I just was there and feel like, oh, I understand Python string. I, I really understand it. But later, when I really meet the issue I mentioned, I will uh, explain later, it's so called supporting Python string. I understand the difference between Python 2 3 string. I, my brain is just like exploded. And I really don't know what happened there. And I started research, and finally, I got some idea and yeah, this is the status now. And I will explain this by the following flow. First is what I found uh, after I meet the problem. I, what is the string of Python 2 and 3 difference? And later, why they design such way? And finally is the treatment. All right, uh, the background, let me quickly explain the background. So the first thing is, I believe, uh, I don't need to explain that here, but nobody should use Python 2 nowadays because the next year it will be end of life of Python 2. And literally just like uh, three months and less than two weeks later. And I have some optimistic number behind. The first is you can watch the talk by uh, Victor Steiner, who is the C Python core, core developer. He talked the thing on PyCon 2018 is the Python 3 10 years later. He mainly talked about how Python community push all the Python developer use Python 3. And we did have a really nice number here by JetBrain survey. They did a survey this year, I don't know the number they, had, they got, but last year the number they got is 84% developer use Python 3 by default. However, the reality is Every, almost every like, company or, or a tons of people who work on the project has just legacy dependency in Python 2.7. And they always complain like, oh, we ha I have some dependency in 2.7, so I, I cannot just use Python 3. And so that's uh, the background caused me to work on a thing called supporting Python 3 in my company. It's basically move all the package to support Python 3. 
I did give a talk in uh, PyCon Japan a few days before about supporting Python 3 in large scale projects. So if you are interested, uh, you can search PyCon Japan and their YouTube channel should have my talk there. So why I took this background is mainly because STIR, this term, is the most painful problem of supporting Python 3. Okay, so move on the Python stream 101. Um, let me just briefly explain the basic, let's go back to the basic thing. What is text versus bytes? So text here uh, means what? Means how to present information in the memory. So basically, literally, this, the place you can see, they print a tons of strange Python uh, in the emoji or in some strange symbol. And this is the thing you can see. This is the thing we call text. We don't really care about how this thing store in the memory. We don't care about that. We just care about how we present that. This is what you can see. On the upside, bytes is another thing is how we store the information in the memory. So we don't really know how it looks like. We just know this is the uh, information stored inside the memory. Then how Python 3 treat that. So Python 3 treat that by default is text. Means that if you put any string, like the first one Python, it shows Python. And if you put a strange Python with emoji, it still shows that thing, present that thing for you. This is a Python 3 default, default behavior. It treats the thing like a text. And if you want to see the bytes by Python 3, the thing you can do is a, a function called encoding, uh, encode. So you got a, you, basically you got a, um, let's call text in Python 3, and you can append, uh, prepend a B in front of the text, and basically that will be the um, bytes. And the other thing you can do is use a function called encode. And you see, if you use string encode and put the encoding there, and basically you, you can still do the same thing there. And the, the B's limitation is uh, it basically by default will treat ASCII code. So if you meet a, like a second case is the, well, let's say uh, emoji inside, and the situation would be you cannot encode to ASCII, so you cannot use B. You need to use the function encode there. And how about Python 2? Python 2 is totally in another situation. Uh, if you write Python, you still get Python. You don't feel weird part. This looks the exact same. But if you write an emoji-based Python, this is the thing you will get. It's the, uh, you can see just uh, well, how it's stored in the memory. This is how Python 2 treat text. And so by default, Python 2, as here say, it auto-encoded your uh, your input. It will auto encode it into something, depends on what you input. It looks very cool. And how to make it back to text, because uh, the, the default behavior of Python 2 seems uh, on the totally upside. And the way to do that is just basically put a U in front of the, um, the bytes, so the Python 2's stir. And you can get uh, the Unicode return here. That's the first part of Python stream 101. Then moving on, uh, let's talk a, a bit more about like, uh, uh, we, we just mentioned that from text, and Python 2 is default behavior and Python 3 is default behavior. Let's take a deeper look at how it really looks like. And if you use a function called dir, and DIR can basically check the, uh, the object behind the thing you, you, you uh, declare there and to, to see like a what member function you can call, uh, instance function you can call. And in Python 3, if you do that for stir or for bytes, the result you can get is basically in stir, you get encode, right? Because stir is just a unicode and you need to encode it to the bytes. And on the upside, if you put bytes there, you will get decode function. It looks very reasonable. You can see like, uh, okay, if you want to make the bytes uh, present it, and you need to provide an encoding. How about Python 2? 
I, I'm not sure like how many people have noticed this before. Anyone can raise their hand? Okay, very limited people, maybe very limited people know this. Yeah, that's right, I was. Like this reaction when I first started to see that. It's like, what? I mean, why the stir, why the bytes, or why the Python 2 only Unicode? Uh, behind that is like a decode and encode. Why is that? That's pretty much the thing I need to go back to talk about a thing called Python 2 design philosophy. So, in Python 2, the fact is, it was designed at that time, uh, like in a country called America, and in a US keyboard, on top of that, ASCII code only. So they design Python, they just care about ASCII. And that's why they treat all the string in the, uh, the way I mentioned. Python 2 is well designed for ASCII code, but if you meet a such situation, like you put the emoji, you try to do the encode, and remember in Python 2, if you put this uh, pure string without any prepend, prepend uh, thing to show what's that, it actually means it's bytes. So if you put a byte, you try to encode it, it means nothing. It literally means nothing for that. So you try to encode it in another thing, it will basically just show the, the first uh, unico Unicode uh, arrow I, I mentioned. Either decode or encode arrow I mentioned. So it's still not really uh, answer my question is why Python 2 need this? There is a reason behind. Not sure how many of you really can guess that. Uh, several of all have some people really be there to explain that. It's because of this, a thing called BAS64 and RT13, and maybe more others, but as far as I know, these two is the most uh, rep um, representative one. So because Python 2 uh, wants all the thing can encode and decode uh, easily, so they, they basically just support BAS64. And remember, it's bytes. So we put a bytes, we encode to BAS64, you get some results, and you can also decode it. In, in Python 2, they just don't care because they consider everything perfect to handle in, in um, ASCII. However, in Python 3, the feature, the whole feature of BAS64 or RT13 or other this type of thing is totally removed from Python stream. So the stream in Python 3 you can see is fundamentally just that you need to call a special library, uh, like a BAS64, you need to call it. And then, uh, when you run the function code base64 in code, you need to put the bytes inside. So that's the reason why Python 2 designed in such a way. And remember one thing is, uh, knowing this fundamental difference, we, we need to know that in Python 3, or in Python 2, whatever, you must uh, told, the, told the people uh, what's the encoding of the bytes. Otherwise, they don't really know how to present it. And here is the basically a kind a lots of different encoding we, we, we show here. So the same uh, the same memory thing we store there can represent it in a different shape. Like a UTFA show the high Python, and the ISO AA59 uh, show a different result. And for other encoding, we have we get a different result. So consider like uh, you get a byte lists in the stream, you don't really know what, what encoding you get, you just need to guess. So that, that's basically the, uh, the difference. The, the, the difference and the thing to write a good stream you need to be aware of. But even though we say Python 2 handle ASCII well, and if Python 3 use ASCII, you might consider that if I use ASCII in Python 3, it will, will it be totally the same as Python 2? Unfortunately, the answer is no because of this example. So in Python 2, if you compare the bytes and Unicode in the ASCII code, you will get a true. But in Python 3, you will get false. So I can say like a 99% behavior will be similar, but the 1% difference is here. So there are still a little bit difference between Python 2 and 3. So Regardless of your Python version, uh, we, we, should, we should know like a few things. Uh, 
three three treatment you can you can do here. The first one that you can do is know the factor of the stream. I totally have five plus one treatment. Uh, the first the first treatment that's is provided by Nat, who took a uh, uh, similar things since Python 3 introduced. He talked about the Python 3's uh, string design. And knowing one thing is Python 3's string is Unicode, and Python 2's string is auto-encoded bytes. So that's the idea behind. And so in Python 3, encoding you need to provide manually. And in Python 2, only as Kiko handle well. The rest of them, they will auto-encode it. And that's the problematic part. So Python 3 actually fixed that problem. And the rest of thing here I mentioned is um, in Python 3, as, as I showed in the, the fundamental difference of str stream, you can see uh, in Python 3, stir can use encode and bytes can use decode. But in Python 2, they are two way because of the best 64 support. And next thing is the how, how do you write a co perfect code to handle that? So explicit uh, definition is something is recommended. It's also the uh, document in the Supporting Python 3 book and the, the page on the Python document. It basically sh shows that you should uh, really know what's your input. Like a standard I.O. in Python 2 is bytes. And in Python 3, if you want to handle the same behavior, you need to use sees the buffer and that std in or out. And the file IO, you also need to write it specifically, say, is text or is bytes. Yeah, it's normally like, a, you can see a lot of people, they just write W or write R. They don't really explain you, like uh, they are trying to read bytes or read text. And the other thing is, uh, if, he, if possible, you should try to always prefix, always put a prefix there to show like that's a, a Unicode or that's a bytes. And moreover, all the function you define, if the input is text, you should ideally, if, if you need to handle that, uh, into, uh, handle that bytes, you always need to provide an encoding. So it means that uh, you don't need to guess there. You should always provide the, the thing for them. This is how HTTP protocol they design, like every time they send the, they send the traffic, they also provide the encoding. And Python, when you write a Python code, you should also have such concept. When you treat bytes, encoding is necessary. And the other thing you, you might, uh, some people, especially Windows operating systems people, might meet is the uh, operating systems default encoding. And you can use a function called sys.get default encoding or set default encoding. To, to verify that what encoding you use. And most of the time, UTF-8 should be uh, the default one, but still there are tons of edge cases. And the other concept is, so, is thing so-called Unicode sandwich. So Unicode sandwich, uh, like the thing, literally is just like a sandwich. So we always, if possible, if you need to handle the bias situation, uh, try hard to just uh, put the bytes as a re as a out outside, and uh, you get the bytes. You start to decode it and handle Unicode, and uh, later output is also bytes. So don't make the uh, any any people call your function worry about what encoding uh, they should use. You just basically handle the encoding inside the function. So right, uh, forget about the, the title text decode the string as soon as possible in your library and uh, encode as late as possible. And uh, fi the, the fourth thing is the Python 2.3 compatibility. So from the previous example, uh, we basically say uh, the fundamental difference there. So if you want to make your Python 2 code uh, still running as same as Python 3, after it can run in Python 3, the thing you can do is, uh, this you might see a lot of people use before, but you might not really understand what's that. Uh, from future, imports Unicode literals. This will make your Python 2 code behavior like your Python 3. But remember, 
only put this after your call has the same behavior. Otherwise, uh, it will be pretty problematic. And finally, the treatment five is a single typing. I really highly recommend to do typing for your, especially stir or bytes, because uh, this is the nodes from Dropbox migration. Uh, they basically mention the same thing. When, when you write a, a stir, you should always put what's the type behind that uh, stir or bytes. Otherwise, people, it's very hard to understand, such as you, the first example shown here, you put just an encrypt function, you put data and a key, and you return a cipher. If you don't really put what is the data looks like or what is the key should be, and people don't really know like the data is uh, the stir or bytes, or, or can, it might only can be like a ASCII, or it might can be things other than ASCII. And so the, basically the thing is, uh, here is a two way to write in Python 2 or 3. And if you, luckily now your package only in Python 3, you can use uh, the package, uh, well, the tool called Pyre or MyPy. And if you need to support both Python 2 and 3, then MyPy would be the solution. And finally, this is additional thing I did uh, in PyCon Japan this year, is uh, I did a package called uh, supporting Python 3 in C API level. And this place, basically you can see this is the difference, the fundamental difference between Python 2 and 3. Actually, it's very simple. It's just in Python 2, uh, PyString from string and the size, or PyString related function, is actually treat them as bytes. So in Python 3, what you need to do is just uh, uh, replace them as bytes, and things will be the same behavior. The idea here behind is you need to, you want to make the Python 3 called the C API still with the Python original behavior. And if you are interested, uh, the link provided here uh, has a more detail. All right. So the conclusion here, uh, today you learn is, uh, you understand why Python 3 designed such way. And so first thing is, if you're, you're still confused like this core is Python 2 or this core is Python 3, it shouldn't be a problem because you should know there are five treatments, understand the fundamental difference, understand how to write stream properly, and everything should be easy. And the take home message here, yet again, just mention, write your text and bytes explicitly with typing hints and always provide encoding for bytes because people cannot understand what's the encoding if, if you just have a, a thing stored in the memory. And try to apply a Unicode sandwich is, if possible. Although in my experience, uh, Unicode sandwich is not that easy for all the case. So sometimes it's not really able to apply that, but try, try to do that if possible. And also, uh, never, never, ever try to just uh, copy the encode decode solution from Stack Overflow. This is like a, a year before what I did. It's exactly, just search, oh, Unicode encode error, I search, search Stack Overflow. I found, oh, some people say I need to do it in this way. I just copy line, line. But I don't really f understand the fundamental difference at that time. And once you follow those things, I believe uh, Python string is no longer a nightmare for OU. Even you only write Python 3, those uh, methodology still works pretty well. Finally, finally, if you want to verify your understanding today, it's easy. Go to the overflow, search Unicode encode error, and randomly pick up one of them, look at the error to see what's the real root cause behind. If you can understand that without reading the answer, then pretty much you understand it. Thank you. Uh, thanks for Kurt's uh, excellent presentation. The, yeah, does anyone have any questions? Please raise your hands. Oh, okay, <laughs> let's give an, uh, another big applause to thank uh, Mr. Kerr. Mr. Cho, sorry. Thank you.